Virginia City. Most people come here to walk this boardwalk, have an ice cream, and watch the afternoon gunfight. But I'll bet you a Carson City silver dollar that none of these people realize that this was the richest place on earth. Welcome to Virginia City. I'm your host, Henry Tompkins Page Comstock, and I'll be taking you on a personal tour, showing you the history, sights, and sounds of this special place. Virginia City, site of the world-famous Comstock Load and the Big Bonanza. I'm standing at the original site of the Ofer Diggins, it was at this location on June 8, 1859, that the Comstock Lode was first discovered. Now the creation of the Comstock Lode began as a result of a geologic upheaval that occurred 18 million years ago during the violent pre-tertiary period, forming a complicated fault fissure that ran along the base of the Virginia Range for a distance of about four miles and extending to unknown depth. The wealth of the Comstock Lode mines extended from Virginia City south to Gold Hill. There, the Belcher, Crown Point, Yellow Jacket, Kentuck, Imperial, and the Empire produced $90 million and contributed to the 7 million tons of silver ore 300 million dollars in silver and gold worth six billion five hundred thousand dollars were taken out of the load. Originally the load was mined just like most of the claims found in the western Sierra foothills but soon all of the ore near the surface was exhausted. Never in the history of mining had engineers been confronted with the problem of extracting ore from leads that were over 65 feet wide. The only way to get it out was to develop a new method of mining. Philip Dietesheimer, a mining engineer who was born in Germany, came to the Comstock from Georgetown, California in 1860, where he worked in the gold mines. William Babcock, a trustee of the Ofer mine, asked Dietesheimer to design a new method of shoring up these expansive mine shafts, and the engineer invented square-set timbering, an idea he conceived from watching bees construct a hive. Later, in recognition of his resourcefulness, he was appointed superintendent of the Ofer mine, but he never patented his invention that saved so many lives and reinvented hard rock mining. The Sierra was stripped of timber for these square sets and also to power the steam engines that worked the hoists and mills. 80 million board feet of timber was put underground, enough to build 27,000 two-bedroom homes. Over two million cords of wood fueled the machinery and the hoisting works and mills. A new set of millionaires was created from the logging barons and all the other entrepreneurs providing supplies for the Comstock mines and their miners. Virginia City grew as people poured in from all over the globe. Unlike what you saw on the TV show Bonanza, this was not another Dodge City. This was a 19th century industrial metropolis and about 20,000 people lived here. There were mines, mills, and machine shops out on these now bare hillsides. The air was constantly pierced with the sounds of whistles calling workers to their shifts, the explosions of shafts being blasted, the grinding and squealing of machinery as ore was milled from the tailings the 30 to 40 trains a day that were hauling lumber, supplies, visitors, and workers into town and carrying or out all contributed to a constant noisy din. 
Wells Fargo had an office in Virginia City for shipments of bullion and mining supplies. There was a fortune to be made in hauling freight, and William Sharon decided to corner the market by building a railroad. Sharon took his orders from William Ralston, who founded the Bank of California in San Francisco, along with investor Darius Ogden Mill. Ralston established the Virginia City branch of the Bank of California, which is now the Ponderosa Saloon. I'm standing in the bank's old vault. Ralston appointed William Sharon the bank's branch manager. In the late 1860s, the mines were in Baraska meaning they had fallen upon hard times, and owners needed a lot of money to pursue hard rock mining and expand to lower levels. Many owners borrowed heavily from the Bank of California. It became known as the Octopus, as its holdings expanded from collateral and mines to mills, water, timber, and ultimately the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. Almost 40 years after the last run of the v and on July 2nd, 1976, in honor of our nation's bicentennial, Bob Gray fired up the v and line to carry passengers in Virginia City. Bob had been aboard the very last run of the v and in 1938. He had a dream in 1972 to restore the V&T between Virginia City and Gold Hill. After four years of hard work, that dream came true. This was an enormous enterprise securing the old right-of-way, building a road bed and then track, opening up tunnel number four, and finding an engine and cars, plus the crew, to maintain and run them. For years, thousands of guests have enjoyed the ride on the Queen of the Short Line. Then, in the 1990s, v and enthusiasts, Story County, Carson City, and Nevada State officials had a dream to take the v and all the way to Carson City again. The Nevada Commission for the Reconstruction of the v and Railway was created by the state legislature. For a decade, the commission raised funds and finally broke ground on April 6, 2005 and built a new roadbed. Filled in the Crown Point Ravine as a trestle was no longer practical or safe. Filled in the Overmund Pit and opened tunnel number two, which is 566 feet long. Now you have the choice of two excursions. The 35 minute ride will take you from Virginia City to Gold Hill and back, or you can have an all day v and experience, riding from the depot just outside Carson City to Virginia City and back. The days when the Comstock earned its fame as the richest place on earth was between 1859 and 1880. Annually, the mines are sending over $15 million to the mints in San Francisco and Carson City. The Con Virginia mine took over $105 million in gold and silver out of the ground. Of the 22 major mines, only six paid dividends more than the assessments of their operating costs. These were the California, Con Virginia, Gould and Curry, Crown Point, Belcher, and Kentuck. But by 1880, the Comstock load was played out. In the 40 years until 1920, only $55 million were produced from the mines still in operation. This amount, combined with the total up to 1880, would bring the wealth extracted in gold and silver from the Comstock load to approximately $6,500,000 at today's rates. From the turn of the century until 1959, Virginia City was literally a ghost town. Most of the machinery used in the mines was sold or melted down for scrap metal in the war. Her once busy streets were empty. 
houses and storefronts crumbled away, buffeted by zephyrs, the harsh sun, and brutal winters. The only major project was the paving of Geiger Grade, a vast improvement over the old toll road. This was a WPA project during the Depression. Then, in 1959, the town experienced a new bonanza. Ben and his three sons, Adam, Hoss, and Little Joe, would ride into Virginia City every Sunday night on their hit TV series, Bonanza. Little did the viewers know, that the Ponderosa Ranch was actually 43 miles away, down a mountainside, over a valley, and up the eastern slope of the Sierra by the shores of Lake Tahoe. All they knew was that they too wanted to ride into Virginia City like the Cartwrights and have a real Western experience. This was a rebirth for Virginia City. Just about every weekend you'll find some kind of parade, competition, celebration, or other event here in Virginia City. Outside of Ireland, you'll find the most St. Patrick's Day fun at the annual Mountain Oyster Fried Testicle Festival, where cooks fry to win the title of the best ball baker or fryer or sautéer, whatever the case may be. People are nuts for them balls. The Civil War moves in every year and the North and South fight again. We have the most spectacular fireworks in the West for the 4th of July. And then there are the outhouse races. Better get out of the way cause them high test johns don't break for anybody. And how about them camel races? Virginia City literally busts a hump. There's a huge parade and the races where anyone can ride a camel or an ostrich. And talk about races? The biggest motocross in the West is here, the Virginia City Grand Prix. The fire department goes wet and wild with their fireman's muster. Plus, Classic cars come up here on several weekends, including hot August nights. And then there's the Harleys during street vibrations. And the Ferraris during their spectacular hill climb. Up at Piper's Opera House, there's a steampunk ball. Governor's Ball. And every year, the always sold out Comstock Cowboys Christmas concert. The highlight event of Christmas on the Comstock. Of course, almost every occasion deserves a parade, and Virginia City has the best, most quirky, and fun parades in the nation. Whatever you do, you'll want to stop here at the Virginia City Visitor Center and get a Comstock Adventure Pass. They have a number of packages to suit any budget, and you'll get a good deal on area attractions. Go to their website to buy your passes in advance, and for more information about events, lodging, and tours, call this number, 775-847. 7500. There are older towns in the state of Nevada, but none that will surpass historic Virginia City. This is the town that made Nevada a state. It's no place like home. Come up and see us sometime.